Praise the Lord. Everybody say with me, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Close your eyes and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of this wonderful, cool day. Thank you, Lord, because of the showers of blessings you've given us every time we have prayed unto you. And we are asking, O oh Lord, at this time, you will shower more of your blessings upon us in Jesus' name. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, that your hand will be mighty upon us, mighty upon our leaders, and your word will do good in every heart, every life in Jesus' name. Be glorified here today and in all those locations where they are listening and watching on satellite. Lord, we are praying that you will pour your blessings upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And give me a great amen. Don't sit down yet. Say this after me. Lord, raise me up. So I can stand on mountains. Lord, raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. Lord, raise me up to more than I can be. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on every stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You can be seated. This morning as we come to our faith clinic, we're looking at the important message, the seeds of greatness. The seeds of greatness you know something about the seed that's what the farmer plants and he plants that thing inside the soil and then as he plants it inside the soil what he does then he continues to water it he continues to nurture it and he continues to cultivate the ground around and it is in that cultivation, it's in that watering, that eventually the seed will grow. And if you are going to be great, there are seeds you plant in your heart. There are seeds you plant in your mind. And if those seeds are seeds of greatness, then as you water the seed, as you cultivate around the seed, as you build a fence of protection around the seed that is sown, then it will grow and it will bring forth fruit. As you look at Luke chapter 8 verse 11. Luke 8 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. I'm going to do it this way. Look at this. The seed is the word. Every word is a seed that is sown in the heart. And when you accept that seed in the heart, and you nurture that seed in the heart, and you build up on that seed sown in your heart, then there will be a result. The result will be a harvest. Before I get to the seed of the Word of God, I need to tell you that every word is a seed. Every thought is a seed. Every idea is a seed. Every opinion that is given to you and you accept it is a seed. And that seed, when you nurture it, you meditate on it, 
you accept change. You seek over it. You live by it. You protect it. The word, the thought, the idea, the opinion that is sown in your heart. It is that seed that will grow. There are bad seeds, there are bad words, there are bad statements, there are bad opinions, and there are bad ideas that are sown in the heart. A child gets to school. And a child is a left-handed child. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the teacher, not understanding the functioning of the brain and the functioning of the hands. And there are some things that come with us with birth. It's in the genes. And whether you're the right-handed or left-handed, that's already born with you. But the teacher did not know that. And as the child was writing on the left hand, the teacher bullies on him. And the teacher shouts on him. And the teacher said, what are you doing? Change that hand. Put the pencil or put the pen in the right hand. And the child tries to obey the teacher. And puts the pencil or the pen in the right hand. But... In writing with that right hand, it becomes clumsy. The child is confused. The child is taken away from his comfort zone and is taken into a confused zone. And then the teacher makes a statement. You'll never do well. You don't know how to use your right hand. That's a word. That's a siege. That's a thought. That's an idea. If that child accepts that idea, you will never do well. You are clumsy. You are confused. You will not amount to anything. If the child accepts that statement, that word, that seed, and not just it, and meditates on it, and plans on it, every time he wants to read, he remembers the seed that is sown in the heart. That seed will bring forth the harvest of mediocrity. He will not be able to do well. But if the child gets back home and says, Mommy, Daddy, my teacher told me something that I will never do well because I use a left hand. If the mother is wise at that time, if the daddy is wise at that time and says, No, my child, the teacher, you know, is a human being. He knows his subject, but he, don't, he doesn't know the subject of human personality. He's ignorant about that. You will do well. And the father, the mother, if they uproot that seed, a seed you dig out, a seed you uproot, cannot bear fruit and then the father sows the positive seed the good seed and says to my child you will do well and I brought you to the Lord you will do well and keeps on sending him planting him the seed that is positive powerful productive and that child meditates on the new world the productive word, the powerful word, and the profitable word, then the child will nurture that seed in the heart. And that child will be nurturing the seeds of greatness. When you come to the word of God, and you accept the word of God, and you nurture the Word of God. And you build on the Word of God. And you water the Word of God. And you keep on meditating on the Word of God. What it will do for you is that it will make you to climb up the ladder of success. Because the seed 
is the word of God. And it brings greatness. Actually, the way it works, you know, when you see the soul, that siege will do quite a lot of things. As you are watering it and not sharing it, you are going to discover that siege will begin to grow. It will shoot up. First, the leaves, the stem, then the fruits as it's growing. Then harvest is coming. When the word comes to you, there is something that it does. It builds faith in you, confidence in you, trust in you, assurance within you. It's the word, the seed, not church. Meditated upon, accepted, watch upon. Use faith, assurance, trust, confidence in the Lord. And those are the things that lead you to greatness. In Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That's the seed. Faith, trust, confidence, assurance comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. When you hear that word and you meditate on that word, it gives you the faith. And that faith gets you to do impossible, incredible things. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, let me stop there for a moment. They were asking a question from the Lord. And they asked the question, Why could we not cast him out? Why can't we? Why couldn't we? Because of your unbelief. How did they get unbelief? By sowing the negative seed in their hearts. What's the negative seed? You cannot. This is difficult. This is impossible for you. You are not made to achieve this. You cannot be like Jesus Christ. You are weak. And there is nothing you can do. Satan is too powerful. And the demons are too stubborn. And there is nothing you can do about this. That negative seed planted unbelief in their hearts. And the unbelief in their hearts brought the words, can not, can not, cannot achieve, cannot receive. Cannot climb up. Cannot be the person you ought to be. The siege of unbelief. The negative siege will bring defeat in your life. But the word of faith, the word of power, is what will bring the greatness into your life. That's why Jesus said in that same Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, the word of faith, the word that builds faith and trust and confidence. An assurance 
will give you the faith. It starts like the faith, like a grain of mustard seed. Then you will say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, removed, hence forth yonder, unto yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Is that siege that makes everything possible? And then you have greatness, desirable greatness, profitable greatness, enjoyable greatness, lasting, enduring greatness. And it is this seed that you plant in your heart, that you nurture in your life, that you water in your life, that you meditate upon, that makes you to have that greatness. I'm dividing the message of three parts. Number one, sowing the seed of the world. That's your responsibility. You're sowing that seed. You're sowing that seed. And as you sow that seed, you know if it's going to bring forth fruit, you must water it, meditate on it, nurture it, protect it, build a fence around it, so that the termites or the, or the rats or the birds of the air will not come and pick them away. So, the siege of the world, number two, standing by the standard of the world, standing by the standard of the world. Number three, seeking the spirit of wisdom. Seeking the spirit of wisdom. Number one, sowing the seed of the word. In Mark chapter four. Mark chapter four. I'm reading from verse 14. Mark four. Verse 14, the sower soweth the world. This is one of the greatest things you can do for yourself. That you wake up every morning and you sow the seed of the word of God in your heart. And you take one of the promises of God and read it, explain it, analyze it, apply it, meditate on it. And let the promise of the word of God you read early in the morning, every morning, cancel fear, cancel unbelief, cancel impossibility thinking. That's not possible. To so cancel that from your life, you sow the seed of the word in your heart. The sower sows the word. And that's what the Lord wants you to do. Every time, sow that word, sow that word, sow that word. And then don't allow the birds of the air to catch it away from you. Or to snatch it away from you. And don't allow the enemies of progress to dig it up. You know, sometimes so when you have read the word of God, and you are rejoicing. Because the word of God is building faith, assurance, trust and confidence, and joy. Then somebody comes to you and says, ah, what's happening to you? You look a kind of extra joyful today. What's the matter with you? That you look so alive and so active today. I, I read something in the morning. What did you read? I read the promise of God. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Ah, that's what you read. You are joyful. If he's an enemy of progress, he will say, But the promise was given to Joshua. What's your name? My name is Stephen. Ah, but the promise was given to Joshua. Was it given to Stephen? And they'll put it away from your heart. And they kill your joy. And they destroy your faith. But then when you meet any destroyer of the seed like that, go back to the world. And read it again. And as you read it in Joshua chapter 1, you are going to read it in Hebrews chapter 13. And say, yes, it was given to Joshua. But in Hebrews, it is repeated again and given to everybody. And it is mine. And you will have it in Jesus' name. 
Give me a good amen. amen. You know the seed. You sow that seed. That's why it says in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let the word of Christ, not the words of Satan, not the words of the unbelievers, not the words of your teacher that doesn't like you, and he doesn't like the church you go. Immediately you came to his class. Maybe he's teaching, you know, one of these important subjects. And then he came to your class. He didn't teach you last session. And then he looked at you the way you dress and the way you appear. And he says, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Which church do you go? They palate. Leave that church. It's okay, go church. They, they study the Bible too much. No, but that's my church. I love the church. I'm even a worker in that church. What? Ah, we'll never agree here. And then everything you have learned, he wants to put it away from your heart. And every time he does that, you go back to the word again. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And nobody will be able to take the word away from you. I said they will not take it away from you. The word of Christ. Let it dwell in you richly. You see that word richly to dwell inside you. And you know, sometimes uh, we had a program here in Lagos at the headquarters. I'm saying this because of those who are watching on satellite. And then we, we got some of our boys and girls to come and preach. And uh, I listened to some of those boys and girls. Some of them could, you know, the, the pulpit was almost higher than them. We had to make some adjustment to get the microphone to their mouth. And I remember, I still remember one little tiny torch. A very small in stature. But I know that that boy is a giant already now in Jesus' name. And, and he came and he opened the Bible. And I was sitting back there. And then he read the Bible. He explained the Bible. And then he'll preach on and quote the Bible from his heart, from his mind, from his head. I said, what? This child has the word of God dwelling in him richly. And that child is going to succeed. I said he's going to succeed. And when you plant the seed of the word of God in your heart, and you allow the seed to dwell in your heart richly in all wisdom, admonishing, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. When you allow the word to do that and to be in your heart, that's what makes you to prosper. That's what makes you to be able to have the success, the greatness that you ought to have. Because it's a seed. Job chapter 23. In Job chapter 23 verse 12. Job 23 verse 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have exalted, I have valued, I have appreciated, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That means I take the word of God to my heart. And you know what how are you? How the food becomes uh, becomes useful to you if a person, for example, eats and vomits it out. The food is not going to be beneficial. If he eats and then is having some problem in the stomach and he goes to the toilet immediately, the food is not going to be beneficial. How does the food become beneficial? You know that. You put it in your mouth. You chew it, you swallow it, you digest it, and then it has all the nutrients it ought to have, and it goes to the different parts of your body, and it builds you up. And that's what you do with the Word of God. That you have the Word of God, 
You, you write it in the notes, but you store it in the heart. You stock it into the brain. You soak it into your mind. And then because you are digesting it, you are meditating on it, you are living by it, then it becomes useful and it is the word that plants the seed of greatness in your life. And here is what Job said, are the seed, the words, the commandment of his lips, and the words of his mouth, more than my necessary food. And then he tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, my son, attend to my words. It's not just hear the word, attend to my word. Did your mother ever told you, she wanted to go out somewhere. And then you have a little baby in the house. And mommy said, my daughter, please, don't do any other thing. Don't go out. Don't think about any other thing. You see your junior brother, junior sister, the baby, attend to him. That means stay by him. That means take care of him. That means protect him. That means don't let any insect bite him. That means don't let his life be in danger. Attend to the baby. And that's what the Lord is saying. My son and my daughter to you, attend to my words. Stay by that word. Protect that word. Keep that word. Watch over that word. Meditate on that word. Attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. That's what it does. It's the word that comes powerfully in your life. And then that word that you nourish, that you water, that you meditate on, that you protect, that you preserve, that word then gets you and moves you on to the greatness the Lord has for you. Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Let's stop there for a moment. And sometimes you'll find a young man or even an adult. And you will say, but all this that we're saying, all this that I'm hearing, the seeds of greatness... And if we say, we read it in the Bible, the word, the siege is the word. And then you say, I know a particular boy. I know a particular child. I know a particular schoolmate. That if you ask any question on the Bible, and you refer to any part of the Bible, then it comes immediately. He knows that Bible. But he never passes any exam. But he can quote the Bible to you. I even know some adults, as for quoting the word, the word is in their mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of their mouth. I know a number of adult people that they are almost a walking Bible. They know the Bible. And I don't see the success. I don't see the greatness. You know what? The word in the mouth is only the superficial part. It must go deep into the soil of the heart. 
There are people that can coach the Bible and they have it in the head and they have it in the mouth, but they do not meditate on that word. It is the meditation that waters the word and makes the word you grow for you to have what you ought to have, for you to be able to have the harvest of greatness in your life. Joshua chapter 1 again, look at it, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Don't go on vacation on the necessity of meditation. You know how meditation works? If you don't train yourself, you're, you woke up in the morning, and then you told somebody, good morning. And then he looks at you as if where are you coming from, and frowns at you. And he didn't even answer. And then you begin to think, what did I do to him? Did we meet yesterday? Did I snub him? Did I neglect him? Did I insult him? Did I hurt him? Did I do anything to him yesterday? I don't think so. Good morning. Get away from me. You bad girl, bad boy. And then for the rest of the day, that's what you are meditating on. They called me a bad boy, a naughty girl. Are you on vacation now? On vacation because you are not meditating on the word of God. You are not meditating on the seed of greatness. You are not watering the seed of greatness. And you go on a long journey away from the word of God. They say, I'm a bad girl. They say, I'm a naughty girl. They say, I will never do well. They are not greeting me. They are frowning at me. Nobody loves me. And then you are meditating on the wrong thing. And then you bring yourself down. And it's like you are climbing a ladder. And your meditation on the ne negative thing makes you to come down from the ladder. And if you are not careful, you are going to start afresh later. Whenever you meet anything that is contrary to the word of God, just brush it off. Yes, it's some problem. Maybe you had a bad dream tonight. Maybe that's why it's acting like that. Therefore, you brush it away. Yes, it's some problem. Maybe his junior brothers and sisters are giving him a hard time. And he wants to have that on me. He wants to, you know, catch me because they caught him. Brush it away from your mind. And keep on meditating on the word of God. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. But I shall meditate therein, day and night. And then it says, it's only in that way that you will be able to observe and to do whatsoever is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And as the victory we have when we meditate on the Word of God. And this word we're meditating on, number one, is the positive word. You're not going to take the word that was spoken to Cain, and then you're meditating on that. You're not going to take the word that was spoken to Achan, and you're meditating on that. You're not going to take the word that is spoken to Judas is carried, and you are meditating on that. The positive word of God. Meditate on those promises. Number two, the powerful word. The powerful word. The word of God that is so mighty and powerful. That's what you meditate on. Number three, the purifying word. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Number four, the productive word. It's the word that produces something. The word that produces a champion, a giant, a, su a successful person. It's the word that produces a conqueror. Number five, the prevailing word. The word that prevails over 
every negative thing in your life and the word that prevails over every curse, every yoke, every impossibility in your life. Number six, the profitable word. This word is profitable. This word is going to make you a profitable child, a profitable son, a profitable daughter. Number seven, the perfect word. Not the imperfect words of men. We hear that every time, you know, we talk to people. The imperfect word. But the perfect word of God, you meditate on them. And that is what grants you the greatness, the siege of greatness. In Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring and bud, to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. So shall my word be. The powerful word, the positive word, the purifying word, the productive word, the prevailing word, the productive or the profitable word, the perfect word. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Point number two. Standing by the standard of the word. Standing by the standard of the word. It means now as you've seen the word, as you've heard the word, as you've believed the word, as you have accepted the word. And you know, this word is able to build you up and to make you as great as the world can lead somebody up. Then you are standing by it. You are staying by it. You are sustained by it. And it is that what you focus on every time because it is a siege of greatness. It tells us in Psalm 119, verse 30. Psalm 119, verse 30. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy commandments have I laid before me. You choose the word. That's something very deliberate. You are not waiting for other people, but you make your choice, and you make your decision, and you say, this siege, the seed of greatness, that's what I'm going to stay by. I have chosen the way of truth that judgments have I laid before me. Psalm 1, I'm reading from verse 1, Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the word of God. In his law, in his word, does he meditate day and night? You see how the scripture is emphasizing it and repeating it and reminding us every time. Meditate, meditate on the word of God. And you are going to train yourself to do that. 
because the natural thing is to meditate on the facial appearance of a person I'm looking at. You know, I'm, I'm walking about and I look at him and he frowns at me. And then he makes his posture and his, you know, his facial appearance and says, don't come near me, don't greet me, I don't like you, I don't love you. Get away from my sight. The tendency is when somebody does that to you, immediately you begin to meditate on their facial appearance. They don't like me. They don't appreciate me. They don't love me. They, they tell me to go to hell. Get out of my way. Blow, let the wind blow you away from there. Who am I? It looks like, you know, I'm, I'm not a good person. That's a problem. You are meditating every time on the actions of people, on the facial appearance of people, on the attitude of people. Come on now, turn around and meditate on the Word of God. If you are going to be great, you need to stop all this meditation on what your teacher said, what your neighbor said, what the girl said, what the boy said, what those people are doing against you. It's delight, it's in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Tell me the rest yourself. Ah, say it that so that Satan will tremble. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Stand by that word. Uh, you know, when you stand by the word, it's going to make you great. And that, you know what I read now? That's the word of David. Because David decided he was going to meditate on the word of God. If you think about enemies, David had enemies. If you think about setback, David had setback. If you think about problems, David had problems, but he became great. What made him great? In his law, does he meditate? And in that law, he meditates day and night. He did not allow the world to get away from him. Look at the result in 1 Chronicles chapter 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 11. And you see that it is this word that will make you great. In First Chronicles chapter 11, we're reading from verse 9. So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. The word brought the Lord nearer. You see to that again. The word brought the Lord nearer. Can I tell you something about what I said now? Anything you are meditating upon, let's say for example, I told you that if you met somebody and a fellow acted to you and looked at you in a way that as if you are small, he belittles you. He looks down on you. He minimizes you. He treats you like a slave. And then you begin to meditate and think on the word that is said. Who do you think you are? Ah, because you are the you know, distinction in one or two subjects the other time. You think you are going to be great. I'm telling you, they will not amount to anything. As you begin to meditate on what they say, their word will bring failure nearer. Their word will bring, if you are meditating on their word, their word will bring defeat and sorrow nearer. And let's say, for example, somebody look at you. And then he said, come nearer me here. What have put your eyes in the night? Looks like you are sick. Looks like uh, your eye, there's something wrong there. If you meditate on that, all of a sudden, as you are meditating on it, they say something is wrong with my eyes. They said, I'm getting sick. And that's what you are meditating on. And they said, what happened to you? 
Did you have a bad night or whatever? As we are meditating on that, their watch will bring sickness nearer. Throw it away. Don't think about it. And meditate on the word of God. It is the watch that brings the Lord nearer. That's why it says in that chapter 11 verse 9, So David was greater and greater. For the Lord of hosts was with him. Esther chapter 9. Esther chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 4. In Esther chapter 9 verse 4. For Mordecai. <coughs> for Mordecai was great in the king's house. And his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai. What greater and greater. Because he meditated on the word of God. He had problems. In fact, because he will not bow down to the wishes of Haman. Haman decided he will destroy him and destroy all his people. He had problems. But he was meditating on the promise of God. He told Esther. Deliverance will come for the Jews. Esther, if you are willing to help us and speak to the king, it will come through you. If you don't, we're not meditating on impossibilities. Deliverance will come to the Jews through another source. It is when you meditate on the word of God, you become greater and greater. How do you do that? Number one, listen. Number two, look. Number three, learn. Number four, love. Number five, live. Number six, leave. L-E-A-V-E. -E. Number seven, library. Number one, Listen to the word. Listen to the word. Because you know the word is a seed of greatness. And if you're going to be great, this is a seed that you must plant in your heart. Listen to the word. Number two, look into the word. Open the pages of the scripture. And look into the word, Lord, what promise do you have for me here? Lord, what provision do you have for me here? Lord, what protection is available for me here? Lord, what inheritance is mine in the word? Look into the word. Number three, learn the word. Learn it. Learn it. Take it to heart. Memorize it. Apply to yourself. Know how to skillfully apply the word of God to your life. Learn the word. Number four, love the word. I've esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. Love the word. Number six, live by the word. Everything you do, somebody has offended you. What does the word say? Forgive and you'll be forgiven. Somebody is having some difficulties with you, forbear. And then be in agreement and be in harmony, unity for the people of God. Live by the word. Are you sick? Call the elders of the church, let them pray for you. Live by the word. Are you having any challenge, any problem? Call upon the Lord in the day of trouble. He will answer you. Live by the word. Everything you do, every action, make sure you are living by the word. Number six, leave everything contrary to the word. Anything that is different from the word, contrary to the word, leave it. Abandon it. Jet it, sin it. Throw it away. Leave everything contrary to the word. Number seven, liberate yourself and liberate other people by the word. You liberate yourself by reminding yourself of the word of God. And you liberate other people 
by the watch of God. I come to point number three, seeking the spirit of wisdom. Seeking the spirit of wisdom. And that you find in the seed of the word, it's actually the seed of the word that attracts the spirit of wisdom unto you. In Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4, Proverbs chapter 2 verse 4. If thou seekest her as silver, and searcheth for her as for heed, treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god for the lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly wisdom that you'll search, you'll seek. And it's in the word of God. That as you seek the spirit of wisdom, you have it through the word. Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. And she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal sin. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give thine head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee. You see that? It's telling us what wisdom will do. That's why it says in verse 10, Hear, O my son, my daughter, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. That's talking about wisdom and about the knowledge of the Lord. In James chapter 1, James chapter 1, reading from verse 5, it tells us that we can have that wisdom that we'll pray and we'll ask the Lord. The asking, the praying, the demanding from the Lord, asking in faith. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. This morning we will have wisdom because God will give liberally, abundantly, and he'll give sufficient that you need. He says, it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What the Lord is telling us is that as we sow the seed of the word and we stand by the standard of the word, then we also come to God and say, God, we need wisdom. And then we're seeking, searching for the spirit, for the spirit of wisdom. And as we do that, we discover, number one, the wisdom of his word. When you come to the Lord and you search in the Word of God, you discover, number one, the wisdom of His Word. Number two, you discover the wisdom of His will. You understand 
the greatest thing you can do is to abide by the will of God because it is the wisdom of God that has produced and proclaimed that will unto you the wisdom of his will number three the wisdom of his way there are many many ways and there's a way that seemeth unto a man right but the ends thereof are the ways of death but God has provided and God has paid and God has shown us his own way and there is wisdom in the way of God number four the wisdom of his warning the wisdom of his warning when you go to the right or you go to the left thou shalt hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it do not turn to the right do not turn to the left look straight on and follow the way of the lord the wisdom of his warning number five you discover as you search in the word of god the wisdom of his weapon you see if you want to conquer the enemies of progress you don't need to look here and there and be searching for the weapon the effective weapon the overpowering weapon the conquering weapon is revealed in the word already and if you stay with the word of god you will discover the wisdom of his weapon number six the wisdom of his witness as you look at the word of god and you hold on to the word of god that is the thing that the spirit of god will witness to and then the lord will be telling you yes you're on the right path yes that's the way that leads to success yes that is what will bring the greatness into your life the wisdom of his witness number seven the wisdom of his wonderful name the wisdom of his wonderful name and when you think about what will the lord give me uh, the, the disciples were the lord jesus christ and then he was about to leave them and they were wondering what are you going to give us and he gave them his name because his name works signs and wonders in our lives and the wisdom that what he gave us is his name unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the and then it says and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace the wisdom of his wonderful name that's why the lord is, is telling us this morning that we shall come to him and then he will give us the wisdom he will sow the seed of the word in our hearts we will stand by the standard of the world and then we will seek the spirit of wisdom first kings chapter 3 in first kings chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 5 in gibeon the lord appeared to solomon in a dream by night and god said ask what i shall give thee and solomon said that was showed unto thy servant david my father great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and thou was catch for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day and now O lord my god thou hast made thy servant king instead in the place of my father david and i am but a little child i know not how to go out or come in and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people 
that cannot be numbered, nor counted for multitude. Give, therefore. That's asking. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And so Solomon now said, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked the same. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked the same, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked for riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast as for thyself understanding to discern judgment, behold, I have done according to thy words. Behold, I have done according to thy words. When you come to the Lord and you pray with all your heart, and you pray with all your soul, and you pray with maximum concentration, and you're telling the Lord, Lord, a patch of the seeds of greatness. And I know that your power can make me great. And you told me to ask that you'll give me. To seek and that I will find. And to knock and that you'll open unto me. I come asking, seeking. Knocking. We're told, the Lord said, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And the Lord is ready to do the same thing for us. I said, the Lord is ready to do the same thing for us. That's why we're going to now abandon everything. Remember, remember, it is your concentration on the world, even at the time of prayer, that will bring the greatness and the goodness and the grace of God into your life, that you will be the one the Lord has ordained you to be. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Now you are concentrating. You have received the seed of the word in your heart. And as you have received the seed of the word in your heart, you want to nurture that seed. You want to water that seed. You want to meditate on that seed. You want to apply that word into your life. You want to accept everything. And you want to say, Lord, I know it's for me. I know it's for me. I accept that word. And you make up your mind. You make a decision. From today, from today, I will let the word of Christ dwell richly in my heart. I will not meditate on things that will destroy the plan of God for my life. I will meditate on the word. I will meditate on the word. I will act on the word of God. I will stand on the word of God. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. And you remember what I told you yesterday? An empty bag cannot stand upright. You must be born again. Christ must be in your heart. And it is when Christ is in your heart, you'll be able to stand by the standard of the word of God. Sow the seed, the seed of the word. Make up your mind. Make a, make a quality decision within you that you will stand by the word. That this word of God, this word of God, you will sow it in your heart. Sow it in your heart. Sow it in your heart. The word of God. And that's the word that produces conversion. New life. New behavior. New character in your life. Sow the seed. Sow the seed. Sow the seed, the seed of the world, 
Are you taking your decisions now? Oh Lord, I'm going to sow the seed. Reading the word of promise every morning. Reading the word, the profitable word, the powerful word, the productive word, the protective word. I'm going to be reading the word every morning, storing it in my heart, receiving it in my heart, meditating upon it in my heart. The word, the word, sow it in. Soak your mind, your heart for the word of God. Make a quality decision. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Sow the seed. Sow the seed. I meditate, don't meditate on other things. You'll find many things during the day. You'll find many things at school. You'll see many things around you. Don't meditate on them. Meditate on the word day and night. Meditate on the word day and night. Meditate on the word day and night. That's what will bring the success in your life. The greatness in your life. So the seed of greatness in your heart. Abide by that word. Live by that word. Learn that word. Leave any other thing contrary to the word. Liberate yourself by the power of the word in your life. The word. You live by that standard. And then you're asking God, Lord, I need your wisdom. Lord, I need your wisdom. Lord, I need your wisdom. Solomon prayed, and the Lord answered him. And the Lord has called upon you to pray. If anyone, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And give it to all men abundantly, liberally, sufficiently. And rebukes not and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith. And the Lord will answer you. Then you'll be climbing the ladder of success. Then you will be climbing the ladder of success. It's the word that makes us great. Accept it. Believe it. Receive it. Then you're on your path, on your way to greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. I need a good amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. Thank you, Lord, because your word is a siege of greatness. And Lord, we pray this word that is sown in our heart will bring forth the greatness you desire and you have promised us in Jesus' name. We are praying, Lord, Lord, you give every one of us the grace to live by the standard of that word. And as we live by the standard of that word, your greatness, O oh Lord, will, be trans will transform our lives and be transmitted unto us. And we, by your grace, spiritually, morally, academically, professionally, will have the greatness you want for us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the power of the word will crush and cancel every other thing that is contrary to the word in our lives in Jesus' name. By your word, cancel sickness. By your word, cancel satanic affliction. By your word, cancel demonic oppression. By your word, cancel failure in our lives. 
and Lord, lift up all these children and make them to climb up to the mountain by the power of the seed of the word in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Lord, raise me up so I can stand on mountains. Lord, raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when, when I am on your shoulders. Lord, raise me up to more than I can be. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. May God confirm that in your life in Jesus' name.